Welcome to Has Discusses. We got two very special guests. We got Teddy Slugs and Sempra, Sempra of Schema Posse, Teddy Slugs of Schema Posse, and Misery Mob. Right. Uh, what up? Oh, yeah. Hold up. What up? So, Semper, you had that new release, Vendetta, right? And uh, that was self-produced. Why? Why did you choose to do it all self-produced? Um, well, that EP originally it just wasn't even like I didn't even think about doing an EP. I just had like a few songs stacked up that I just made in a few hours because I was working as a painter at the time, and then I, all I had was the weekends to make music. So pretty much I just jumped in discord and so i sort of just fucking sat there for a few hours and made each song over like a space of like a month or so and then i just decided that if i didn't release them all at once i wasn't going to release them so yeah yeah so yeah all those are produced by me because i just enjoy sitting down and producing i guess bro you're straight up that shit was crazy yeah even the people from delaware here fuck with it like my friend paul butler and he's not even your style he doesn't even like really know that style that you're in in music and he loves it bro like he'll do some like college dropout type of music but he loves your type of music i saw him in the comments just yeah oh yeah yeah i'm really i'm really putting on delaware to this this sound uh and teddy slugs of course is from the washington area and stuff like that what other um washington artists are kind of you make music with teddy uh jeff gordon for sure yeah me and jeff me and me and jeff little jeff gordon got a song on the way it's produced by adam the shinobi uh we've been oh. sign, kind of sitting on it for a for a long time uh another one I, I would say one of like my og homies uh goes by no face the ghost god um we don't have anything planned but definitely uh hopefully in the, sometime in the future yeah. See a track with us. You know, I just was when I interviewed Adam the Shinobi, he was actually really surprised to find out that DJ V Siren is like lives in his city. He was like, Oh, I yeah, thought yeah. there was no artists in my style in my city. I thought all the artists in my city were doing like he didn't like a lot of artists in his city. Like he was like, I'm the only one in the city doing this style. I think he's talking about San Antonio. Then when I told him DJ V Siren was there, he was like, Oh snap. But shout out to Adam the Shinobi. He he uh he stuck with me for two hours talking about Drake versus Pusha T. It was crazy. Oh, snap. We're not going to. I'm not snap, asking you. Yeah. I'm not asking. We're not, I can't. <laughs> no. It's not because I'm so strongly. I just don't want to get get off track. And yeah, um, It gets into a deep hole, doesn't it? Those fucking yeah. conversations. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. What a, what a controversial opinion would you have about a certain rat beef that you want to talk about or now? Just in general. I, don't, I just ignore that shit. I feel like it's Thank just pointless. I, I only do it because, uh, I don't know, Adam really wanted to do that. I was That was really not really me. He was like, we have to talk about this and shit. But um, Adam's awesome as well. Anyway, so Teddy, you told me that you had that, you showed me that Gangsta Pat Deadly Versus cassette. Is that an original? No, that is a Sick Records release uh, from Sick Records Bandcamp. They got crazy releases did the SIBO yeah, one tales from the crypt yeah they got the SIBO they got easy e they got the brother lynch hung they got some classics on there for sure i frequent that area i'm just i don't know i'm a tape head <laughs> yeah for sure I'm, I'm 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 a cd head right now but i i just yeah. i bought a lot of tapes but i don't know like i don't have the tape player like i just bought like a jim croce tape some like 60s folk singer and shit for no i do have a uh I do have this, which I show off almost every episode. Solze still smoking, signed. Oh yeah, bro, he yeah, signed it hey, for me. Solze is tight. Yeah, he had that one, the DJ Koza. Did you guys listen to that? The collaboration EP, three tracks. I, he pops in my playlist all the time, so yeah. I probably have. You know. Semper, do you mess with any Doom Shop artists? Um, I fuck with Freddie Dread. I haven't really dived into like the rest of them though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Freddie Dread's one of my my bigger influences. Yeah, the way his vocals are done are like so fucking like I don't know I haven't heard that before. Maybe somebody's done it like that before, but I haven't. I really mess with the way he does his vocals. Same with you, Semper. You do your vocals. You have that high pitch like craziness, and then on the Vendetta, I heard a lot more low lower voice, way deeper voice. Was that like intentional? Where you're like, all right, with the EP, I'm gonna do it with the deeper voice, 
or have you already kind of thought of that and done it? Um, I just one of the like, well, I've recently I've just tried just playing around with new tones in my vocals. So I guess that that idea of playing around with tones just really shone shone through in, in Vendetta because I just I'm kind of just sick of doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, the um. I, I want to test myself. The, and also the melodies they weren't like completely different, but they were way more spacey and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I just reviewed uh the EP on a podcast, and I was like, it's like I'm stepping into an ab abandoned church, and there's some like ancient scroll that just got opened, and like demons are flying out of it. That's <laughs> what I felt oh, like. That's, tight. <laughs> that's, that's what tight. I felt like when I was listening yeah. to that. And I feel like that's how I feel with Teddy's music, except that's happening during a giant ass party in the abandoned church, and everybody's jumping up and down with guns. You know, that's crazy. <laughs> like you know, what I mean? that's crazy. So like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's just what I think about the because Teddy, like, he's able to add that. You know how like Timbaland, he has that bounce. Like Teddy adds the bounce to his music. You know. And that's why I like Teddy's music because he kind of has, you know. And also, what I heard from Teddy though is that T Teddy, you learned a lot from Semper in the beginning stages. That's what you were oh, telling for me. Sure. For sure. Uh, back when we first clicked up, um, I mean, I posted a little snippet of that song from the dirt before it was actually from the dirt on my story. I know me and Semper were kind of. Uh, knew about each other but really didn't you know had ever talked before uh, I, I posted it on my story said I don't think I'll ever finish the song blah 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 blah. it'll never be released and then he sent me a message like boy if you don't if you don't send me that right now with the open verse on it bro and I swear to goodness this fool had it back within like an hour like fully mixed full verse on there and that's probably my favorite song that was like the start for me and Semper yeah yeah like and when people send their verses in quickly because like i manage people it's like i know that shit like when somebody sends a verse in within hours it's like it could either be horrible or great it's one or the other really there's no in the middle like that's just what i hear but well, yeah well i assume it was the great side and because that obviously that's started the huge duo because y'all are kind of a duo like even when i search semper or i search search teddy into Apple Music, it always says Semper and Teddy Slugs, and they're recommended. I don't know if you've seen that, but I haven't seen that. But yeah, people fuck with you as a duo. Could we potentially yeah. see a collaboration tape or between you two? Oh, we were gonna do that. Then, yeah. then it ended up we were just gonna do like a weekend tape where we just sat in Discord all weekend and just like made like a three track EP, but it just ended up coming out as Shadows, pretty much. <clears throat> There's yeah. two other tracks on that that were supposed to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. But never got around to it, I guess. But we will at some point, most definitely. I'm just like I'm trying to build with with singles at the moment. Well, yeah. Ever Project since Infinite, ever since Infinite, like I've seen it just go uphill. You know, really. Mm -hmm. Like it's like every single really hits it differently and stuff like that for some. And same for Teddy. Teddy, you got some really you guys both always have good cover art and stuff like that. Sempro, don't you make that on your own though? Yeah. Yeah, I make all my cover art and like all my um like video promotions and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but you had that one music video by Chase Main. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. One's that are you guys teaming up for another one soon or uh, no? Nah? Yeah, I just I just moved um quite far down the country, so I got to we got to wait for um for him to come here to be able to film something but we're definitely gonna work on um another song together yeah yeah so Shout teddy chase main that fool's cr that fool's good yeah he had yeah. he's supposed to zillicami edit and i was like oh snap yeah. dude that's great yeah yeah yeah, yeah one uh, of my he's got a lot yeah. of big collabs behind the scenes like he he edits for for little darky and, and spider gang and all that sort of stuff oh darky yeah yeah shit i think the best part of that video the infinite video is the fucking bleachers or some shit the bleachers oh, yeah. and the schema logo on top of that it's and you also had the ski pet the ski mat so um, yeah so teddy will, can we expect any music videos from you in the upcoming future yes and uh it's 
either going to be edited by Chase Main or Sempra himself. We're kind of in the behind the scenes here and there talking about that recently, mm. actually. Um, yeah. Just got to gotta get some footage, send it in, get it edited, packaged. Packaged, yeah. I so, like that term, packaged. Packaged. Yeah, it's the packaged oh, yeah. product. <laughs> yeah, just like just like a cassette, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forget though. I gotta ask Teddy though. When you showed me your Sibo cassette, it was not Tales from the Crypt because that's the only Sibo tape I really messed with. But what was the one that you showed me though? Was it what? Oh, I gotta check that out. Till the till the casket, till the casket drops. Yeah. Okay. I just gotta yeah, download yeah. that. Cause, cause I, I don't know. I just gotta check out more Sibo. I showed you his YouTube and shit. He's always like live streaming with some girl of his or some shit. Shouts out to Sibo. I really want to interview him or something. But isn't Sick Records run by Kevin the Creep? Uh, I'm not completely sure, but uh, Little Creep shit. Some one of them. I know. I know Kevin the Creep. Uh, I think so. I think so. I Cause think so. I heard a Soul Z track and it was like. It was dealt with uh, Slim Gorilla, yeah. and it was produced by Kevin the Creep, and I was like, who the fuck is this Kevin the Creep? This is insanely well done. And then I go to his Instagram, and then I'm, you know, rabbit hole, and checking out sick records. I, I don't know, but yeah. So, Sempra, I gotta ask this. Which scheme a member from the old era you haven't collaborated with do you want to collaborate with? And... Teddy, you can answer this after your sample. Um, Craig Zinn, I'd like to collaborate with. And um, also, I'm pretty sure Omen 13 was was, uh, was Schema, and I'd love to collab with him as well. Two legends right there. Yeah. 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 No, I'd, I'd love to collab with Omen 13. That's, that's one of my goals. Yeah. I think the Homecoming track is, like, the best example of, like, all of the biggest best members of them i mean i really wish i would have liked to seen like nemesis or wolfy wolf on the homecoming song that would have been crazy but those are, two, that, those are my two picks right there i, I want, definitely want to get a track in with wolfy wolf mm. yeah i was just dming him and um he had a, he had a baby shout out to little wolfy wolf and his child yeah. you know <laughs> and nemesis sure, sure. he told me to get some business cards shit i don't i don't know that i don't know you guys are interested in that but nemesis is cool because he's always doing some different shit like he got the video going on and the cds he sells are dope i just bought nemesis. one shout out nemesis for sure yeah yeah, yeah nice. and uh craig zen did you guys hear his last album no i haven't listened to his last album but i've seen the i listened to the boom bap track that he put out oh yeah that was that was dope which one I can't remember the name of it, but it was recently. Well, like, recently, I guess. Like, fucking, like a month or so ago, I'm pretty sure. Like, I remember the intro was like, something was like, flicking ash out the window, reminiscing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, one. Yeah, that one. That was, that was great. That was great. Um, Teddy, you told me that this tape was a legendary tape. Do you, I want to know if Semper agrees. The Fuck Mainstream Tape by Jay Green. Do you agree that that's a legendary tape? Legendary. That's that's mm -hmm. probably uh, probably my favorite Jay Green like um, body of work right there. That's like that's the early early days. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ethel Wolf. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ethel yeah. Wolf Pro on that. I would say I wouldn't. Say, I would say top top three favorite Jay Green body of works. So. Yeah, yeah. Um. On that though, you see so many artists before they blew up though. Like, you really see you. Who do you see on that? You see Denzel Curry. Like what? Denzel Curry is on that. Like I never would have thought I would have seen him. And you got. I just said Def Wolf, but um. Well, Den Denzel, because uh, Jay Green was Raider Clan. Yeah, Raider Clan. Yeah. With um, Denzel. Who else was on that? Two Chains was on that. Like what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like some, what? Some rarities. Some Bro, two chains isn't that bad. I mean, he's just he's like Rick Ross. Like he just spits a really good feature every now and then, but never really has like a really good project. That's how I feel about two chains. I don't know, but yeah. 
Semper, though, I gotta ask though, is there any other New Zealand rappers doing what you're doing at the level that you're doing it at? Um, there's a little bubblegum. He's not not in sort of in the same genre, but he's he he makes some sort of like um low fire sounding like jazz sample type shit, and he's he's blowing up right now. He's shout out bubblegum. He's a man, such a humble dude. Um, there's Herman. Herman makes sort of like funk type shit, but he's he changed up his name. Um, but yeah, not many. I don't think I don't know anyone that makes like even even like remotely similar music to me. But there's there's a few artists doing their thing over here. Well, what would you categorize your music as? If you if you want, I don't even know anymore. Really, <laughs> originally, like, is I I'm kind of just like mixing elements at this point of like lo-fi, hi-fi, fucking trap, funk shit, just atmospheric type stuff. Every time, every time you release a new project, bro, it's straight up there's like something new involved with it. Yeah, it just keeps stacking up with just different elements. Yep. Yeah, I just I'm just trying to just keep changing up, I guess, trying to keep new. I want to ask both of you this sort of, I don't know, this is a decent question, it's not as good as my questions about Gangsta Pat, but when was like the first time that both of you touched a DAW to make something music related? Start with uh, Teddy first. I've been telling Sumper to go first all the time. Um, probably, I mean, my, my dad was a musician, so when he was younger, when his band was recording uh they would go in in his little home studio he had a little analog set you play bass right for a band yeah yeah i played bass i I also play drums as well i mean as well as guitar but i primarily play bass and drums um but he would he would let me mess around with the mixer knobs after his band so early as mm, i would say 98 99 probably but like actually seriously Probably 2008, 2009. Yeah, yeah. And um, you made that one song and, uh, when you were drunk one night, and then who reposted it? It wasn't like APOC Crisis or some shit. Yeah, a- shout out APOC Crisis. Bro, Teddy Slugs was birthed from just a... I was, I was smashed off the 211s. <laughs> I was real deal. I was smashed off the 211s, and I had already had like a little studio set up just from being in har- various hardcore bands. And made a track went to his track train bought a beat made a song posted it woke up in the morning he had reposted it and it had yeah that's his history with that <laughs> yeah and then coast oh, coast day or however you pronounce his name really helped yeah. you out when he got you into misery mob in june of what year uh 2000 june uh oh oh june of, yeah 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 sorry 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 uh june of 2019 I wanna yeah say. yeah yeah. How did he help you though? Um, he, well, I at first I didn't really know how to mix like the type of vocals that I wanted, so I, I had seen him offering uh, vocal mixing services on his Instagram story, and I had been listening to a lot of him in Two Beast, which shout out Two Beast, that's uh, Six Beam and Death Face. So I was listening to a lot of them. So I was like, oh, let me get my vocals mixed from this fool, and then you know we kind of clicked and just started talking more and then he put me on the mob or misery mob and yeah but yeah shout out coast isn't sly on misery mob yeah sly sly's on uh misery mob you got insidious poe hex main coast g grim sly and me yeah nice all right now what's semper's beginnings i heard it's only been two years though like that was surprising to me when i heard that um so are we talking like the first time I ever ever did anything on a on a, a door D A W or whatever, yeah. you call it, or or like the time that led to me continuing. Time that led you to continue it. Just oh, both. Okay, so well, the first time originally it's pretty funny. It was fucking. We, it was me and um, my stepbrother at the time. We were just we were fucking around. I think one of our friends. We were supposed to go to this party. And our friend was supposed to sober drive us to it. And then he ended up like canceling up on us and sober driving like another group of mates. So we, um, we just decided we wanted to make a diss track on him. So, <laughs> so we did that. We made this real shit fucking diss track just, just for no reason. And then 
so that was like the first time ever like um that was when i figured out that i could actually write lyrics pretty good like i just had a natural sort of knack for it in terms of like line structure and all that sort of stuff and then but the actual time that i i continued was i downloaded audacity and then i um i just wanted to make a rap song as a joke i don't know why it was it was around the time that that x passed it was a little bit before that and um yeah i just i downloaded this beat from youtube it was just like a free to use beat and it, it, it sampled like a britney spears song and, I just, like, made it. <laughs> and then and then after that i started i started sort of making um x style like lo-fi sort of like croaky tracks and then it just sort of grew from there i guess and i was using an xbox xbox headset as a mic that's oh man that's great but i mean when did you start like noticing what style you wanted to do and then like fully went ham with it um so i it was around the time that i found like freddy dread ghost and like all that that funk shit all of that sort of stuff i just sort of it's, it's weird usually people in the rap scene they they start from a young age and they listen to like the old shit and then they you know they progress into the new shit Whereas I listen to the new shit and go back to the old stuff. Yeah. I do it all backwards. So, yeah, just sort of found my influence and then just started doing it, I guess. I found out what funk was and then sort of researched it. I like the sound. I like the lo-fi, gritty, dark shit. I've always sort of liked darker music. And it just grew yeah. from there and just evolved and mixed my influences. And the influences are present. Like, you, you sampled that amazing... Grow up Memphis South, Memphis West Wood, that that one. That's like the Hayes song it was yeah. crazy. Um I don't know what you sampled in the uh I wanna I got I got banned from heaven. I don't know what that was. But that was crazy. That was a good that one. That was um the the vocal sample in that, um I don't know what that was either. I think it was just it was just in like a funk drum kit pack that I found it just like was the one one of the only ones without like a beat behind it so i didn't have to like cut the frequencies out so, yeah that's so that's annoying as shit like um when there's like some cowbell melody in the in the yeah. sample and it's like no i want to make my own cowbell melody like yeah. fuck out of here the yeah the, the cow the cowbell melody itself i made that's like that's the most iconic part of the beat i'll tell you that that yeah. beat is ridiculous that's one of my favorite beats and it's not like it's not in the sequel, but the, there's less cowbell in the sequel. Like, it's not the most, like, important part in the sequel to that. I'm talking about I Got Banned From Heaven 2. And that's why I fuck with the sequel. Because, like, it starts off with the... It just sounds like the way it fades in is perfect and shit. But, yeah. Yeah, the, the sequel, I wanted to make it more... It just, like... I, I fucking hate cowbell melodies, if I'm being honest. I hate them so much. I hate them. I can't stand them. I think they're just fucking oversaturated and just everyone just abuses them. So I, I tried to make it real similar to the one that I did before, but just less like fucking in your face. And then with some like newer sounding drums and like better mix, better mixed vocals and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Teddy, what's your opinion on Cowboy Mellies? You don't even use them that much, so. Um, I mean, shoot, when they're... In my opinion, because I there's not really I guess a solid proper way to do it, but if it sounds like it's done proper to me, mm, uh, I yeah. I might I might enjoy it, you know. But I'm I'm not like a a super big fan of the a lot of cowbells. But that's not saying like I hate them or anything. I just you know. I like when they're some. I like when they're used kind of like where a clap would be in a song, where like the melody plays and at the end of the. Uh, pattern it goes dun dun or some shit like Just that used, used yeah. as a perk sort of exactly yeah. yes that's that's when i mess with it like you'll yeah. you'll hear that in um you'll hear that in like 6.6 6. 6 syllables yep. mm. you hear that but some vocal chat where it's like i don't know I, I don't know like i'd kill to like just see a screen recording of like jay green making a beat like hmm. jesus christ i'd pay 300 dollars just to see him like hours of him making beats like who who would you pay to see them make a beat that's a that's a real good question i would pay anybody like, anybody 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 yeah probably mad lib mad lib um yes or 
alchemist, probably. Mm. Yeah, dude, uh, Alfredo and fucking Fetty, like I listened to them so much, like mm. last month. Fetty, Fetty is overlooked. Everyone's like, who the fuck's Currency? I'm not gonna look, like, but real people know that Currency's like amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I've, 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 I've definitely fucked with that. The Willie Lloyd is the best song off oh, Fetty. Um, Semper, do you mess with like Mad Lib or Alchemist or Freddie Gibbs or anyone? I- I haven't I haven't dived into that sort of stuff. Teddy's shown me a little bit of it, yeah. but I haven't really like gone and reached. I don't listen to a lot of music actually. Okay. To be honest, I just I just I don't know. I don't even know how I make music. I don't know how I stay creative because I just don't listen to music. <laughs> don't listen. You only listen to like what you're making at the time, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I when I work, I don't. So I don't work anymore. I just come to the studio every day and make music. But when I did work, I just I would listen to a lot of like Freddie Dread. And like all of that sort of stuff, Freddie Dread, Denzel Curry. Um, but at the moment, like I just haven't been listening to music. I feel I feel like that's probably why I'm I'm having a little bit of a producer's block at the moment. Damn. I definitely when me and Semper be you know kicking it, I definitely would both show each other tracks that we wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I'd be like, oh, this is sick, you know, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm more like in the dusty like boom bap area like because you add that bounce to your music like i'd expect that from you i'd expect semper to like listening to mc holocaust right now or somebody i don't know but i don't know but i feel like bro like especially with the boom boom bap semper if you've ever you know i'm sure you've heard like some of his boom bap tracks but what yeah (laughs) that's all that needs to be (laughs) like what i enjoy making boom bap yeah. And I enjoy listening to it as well. That's what I, I used to do, is I just used to put on like an hour mix of just like old dusty, dark nineties boom bat, and I just like play it in the background. So I really fuck with that sound. I think it's I think it's the most raw form of rap that there really is. That's why I like to see Benny the Butcher sort of like making the be in the face of like popular shit like that. Like yeah. and I mean Griselda in general. Shout out to Griselda and West Side Gun and all them. I love them a lot. And shit like that. Um, let me see what else we can cover. Okay, so Sampra, how fast was Infinite made? Um, I had the beat for a little while. Usually my songs are made pretty quickly. Um, I write them quite quick. I think it, it would have taken me no more than an hour to write. And then maybe like 45 minutes to record and I, I I had trouble mixing it I'm pretty sure for a little bit but it came out real good so I'd say in total probably about 3 hours 4 hours 4 hours mm. cause that's the first song no actually no the first song I heard from you was the new posse joint that was crazy cause it goes Zave then you I'm pretty sure no it's, it's Jay Green then me and then uh, I think I think I don't know if Sam Gohard comes before Zave or after Zave. I think Zave was fourth. Was he? Teddy? Um, I feel like Jay was on the last level. Oh no, is this oh that's New Posse, sorry, I was thinking yeah. New Age. Um yeah. New Posse, yeah, I think I think it's Zave and then Is it Zave? First Zave is first, then you. Yeah. Bro, so yeah. many tracks like oh. <laughs> We I Honestly. do that yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes, bro. That new posse one was good, but I think the best, the second best on the, the schema of New Age tape was Wide Awake. That was great, Ooh. too. Oh, yeah, shout out. Cold Blooded went crazy on that. But yeah. let me let me look at Hollow's Eve. Let me find out which one I like best on Hollow's Eve. Um, Too Cold. Yeah, that's fine. Heater. The, the production that's my favorite. The one's nasty. Yeah, that's nasty indeed. What's up with my, my Zoom meeting? It says eight minutes. I have the upgrade to Pro, or it ends in eight minutes. What? What the fuck? <laughs> We're going to have f- to hit the pause on the... <laughs> Zoom's what the fuck? Zoom is bugging. Like, what the fuck? Ah, shit. Yeah, we can just restart it. Just yeah, we could. We could. We'll just we'll, we'll wait. When it hits the one minute, I'll be like, all right, we'll cut and then restart. Boom, pop, all that shit like that. 
but <laughs> yeah yeah so teddy what did you sort of bring from your band experience into your new music right now um definitely learning to be more consistent because i feel like a lot of local bands just in general they'll get used to writing like five songs which is like their set or whatever that they play at live shows and then not write a new song for months and months and months so definitely like constantly writing new music um was a big advantage because i'm working by myself now and not with four other people's directions you know so more um, creative control more creative control definitely um as far as i mean writing styles definitely like hardcore music like real hardcore music definitely plays a big role in my writing style um as far as like hardcore or beat down well what type of what type of music was the um the band was it like some mad ball type of music or uh, i mean I, you could put it in that section for sure um i mean just traditional hardcore uh we were influenced by a lot of like straight edge bands but i mean none of us were really straight edge but we we listened to a lot of straight edge hardcore bands but, yeah. yeah yeah doesn't like straight edge mean like what does that mean like like non no substances, no none of that, no yeah. violence and shit, or something. I don't know. That's what, because my joke. friend does that, straight edge rap or something. That's actually the guy who called in the beginning right when Sempra, he, he was like, oh my god, it's Sempra, like I'm your biggest fan. I, right before Teddy came and shit, he was like, here. Shouts out to Dead Internally, um, or DJ Young C is his old name. Um, by the way, by the way, Sempra, do you like the film Scream? I watched it when I was younger, so I can't really fucking remember it. But like, I like the whole the whole aesthetic of the old old horror films. I like like Friday Thirteenth and, and Halloween. I, Halloween was one of the first horror f- films from um, that sort of era that I, I watched. Well, yeah. the, the the universe of it, I guess. And that shit scared the fuck out of me. I, pr- I prefer yeah. I prefer the scary movie version of Scream. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he when he stabs uh, Carmen Electra. Uh, He's like, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Yeah. Dude, scary movie is like goaded. Like, Classic. I don't care. Like, don't they're care. like so bad it's good, but I don't care. Like, it's like, yeah. I always say that shit's better than like whatever won the Academy Award last year. It's better than that. Like, you could tell me whatever won the Academy Award and I say scary movie three is better. Bro, that whole era, you had full, you had fools like, the scary movies you had the american pies like it was just oh. a weird time yeah bro <laughs> it was a weird time yeah it was it, you, half that shit you wouldn't get away with now eh? no yeah, yeah so it's funny how the climate of the internet and just like society in general changes yeah. and how drastically it does what's weird about like the whole like certain if you want to find comedy on the internet it's like sometimes you got to be embarrassed if you tell someone that you like like watch this person or something like, like you can't start a comment a conversation and be like do you see that new funny ass alex jones stream or some shit people will be like what the fuck are you talking like mm-hmm. i don't i don't like alex jones but i'm saying like everybody on the internet takes sides now when really yeah. like we should all just be enjoying yeah, like, shit heavily based on politics and all that sort of stuff but it's, oh, i yeah. feel like that just came into play i guess as the internet became more prominent because like most of people's lives are on the internet now. True. <laughs> I mean, I feel like 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 some kids are being fucking raised by the internet. I mean, look at me though. I mean, like <laughs> I'd kill though to like I do in person interviews, but I don't as much anymore. Mm-hmm. But like, there is something about like pulling up to someone's crib, setting up chairs in front of their house, getting my tripod set up getting my microphone that I carry and like having the paper there you know like do you sometimes since Semper every time you collaborate with a lot of these people it's mainly someone in the states you know Mm. do you really yearn for that getting in the studio meeting everybody 
Yeah, of course. Smelling yeah, everybody's like drinks, like... you know. Do you, you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, I, 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 you know, I'd kill to have a fucking to to get fucked up with Teddy one day in the studio. I feel like that'd be fun. But... I'm I'm coming through to. You'll see me posted at something this crib soon. Trust. Oh. Trust. Yeah. So That's what I want right to see. Right now, I can't because they'll. Right now, I I guess like what they'll. They're not like allowing fools into your yeah. Your you, you'd, you'd have to go. On, they'd, you'd have to get some sort of like exemption and then go through like the quarantine. That'll be like three grand, and it's just like fucking. It's yeah. it's just shit, I suppose. But, but that, it's just but the way the world that, is. I'm, po- I'm posted up for like I'm gonna come down for a few months type shit. So yeah. Or just no, get a boat good. and make sure that like your stealth radar and you know. <laughs> Just, bro. just sneak in, bro. Just like how I mean, if people can sneak out of North Korea, you can sneak in in North New Zealand. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Fucking go for bro, it, Teddy. Just, just get a dingy and some fucking. Bro, some I might get popped with a musket over there. I don't know. <laughs> with a musket. <laughs> a musket. Yeah, bro. They might pull up with the. the they might pull up with the damn, the damn. Uh, red coats. Yeah, red coat musket. Bust me in the face real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny as shit. Bro, wouldn't you, wouldn't you hate to be busted by a musket? Bro, he's like, hold on, let me load the powder in. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. Looking down the barrel of a trumpet. Alright, I'm sorry. No, that's funny as shit. Yeah. Bro, we got less than a minute left. Oh, oh shit. snap. It's gonna kick us off, huh? <laughs> Fuck. Um, Alright, we will resume in 3-2. One. Alright, we're back. You know, Zoom Zoom is bugging, as Semper said earlier. Let me rearrange you guys. Ah, shit, how do I do that? How do you, how do you rearrange people on Zoom? Now we don't need to do that, but Teddy Slugs is in the top left corner right now. Um, how is it over there in the top left corner? I'm in the top left corner of the States, too. It's pretty icicles up here right now, bro, not gonna lie. At least you're not in Texas, you know? Yeah. No, it's it's worse than Texas. Oh shit. Yeah. But doesn't it rain there a lot? Um, in Seattle, I'm I'm in eastern Washington now. Um I transplanted to eastern Washington where it's like border of Canada type you know, there's multiple feet of snow outside right now. <laughs> well do you find yourself going to Canada all the time or no? Um no. Uh I few of the members of Misery Mob are posted up in Edmond or Edmonton, I think. Who would that uh, be? Uh, Coast Hex G Grim. They're all posted up in Canada. Where is Sly posted up in? Uh, Tennessee. Oh shit! Okay, that's uh. Oh, he's at the uh, hometown of the style. Um, and all that. But I love Sly. I actually was gonna rap over his one of his beats, but it never planned out. But we're gonna get an interview soon or some shit. And uh, Jake Ohm, too. I want to get an interview with Jake Ohm, too. But he's like, oh, I'm going to get hit 50,000 followers. And I'm like, let me get some Bro. rare footage before that happens. Shout out Jake OHM for sure. Jake me and him O-H-M. got multiple tapes coming. Wait, what? What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, you we'll told me see. you got three tapes coming. Um, yep. I got, some with, or I got one with Jake OHM. Uh, some of the tracks featuring Sempra. Some, of, some other schemas. Some other mob members. Yeah, uh, other tape produced by Phony Wallace. So, yeah. Sump, are you familiar with? You assume you're familiar with Jake Ohm. Yeah, he's O-H-M. Uh, Yeah, I need to get something in with him one day. He's yeah. Really so I interviewed. Who did I interview? Naj, one of the Pike Gang guys, and I was like, "Is it intimidating to rap on a Jake Ohm beat? Because those beats are like, you they probably are nothing to you guys, but." Some of them I hear them and I'm just like, it might be difficult to just like catch up with how crazy good the oh, beat his is. Production is crazy, bro. Yeah, it's good enough for me to listen to an entire beat of just his like beat. I mean, an entire tape of just his beats, which is really not a lot of producers can pull that off. Really, Doom does that. Doom can successfully make a cool tape. But what what beat tapes do you listen to? Any of you guys? Right now. Just in general. Um, probably more recently, the the Jake OHM, uh, like, Font Philosophy. Um, yeah. Some of his beat tapes. And obviously, like, 
the 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 Mad Lib, Quasimodo, J Dilla type shit. But yeah. Yeah. What about Semper? Do you Semper? Do you like uh, beat tapes or nah? Yeah, I have just like usually just gone to um, Isaac ISVBC. I I go into <sighs> his his SoundCloud and I'll just play through his tapes. Just his production is just too good. Bro, that He's everlasting bass release. Yeah. Yep. I got heaps of his shit just in my Spotify Spotify playlist as well. It's just good music to vibe to. Yeah, yeah. Also, a really good Spotify playlist is Schema FM. Check it out mm. on J Green's Spotify. Or you just look up Schema F. Yeah, and shout out all the schemas right now, one time. Well, that's what we got to ask about. I, every time I interview a schema member, I usually make that the first question. But I don't want to do that this time. Like, we already covered a lot of different stuff, but... Semper, how'd you just, I, I hate doing this. I'm like, you go first, you go first, you go first. But it's, it's so fucking annoying, my bad. Yeah, that's, that's um, we'll, talk, we'll start with Teddy, because then he like a... Who joined Schema first, though? Let me ask that. I joined Schema first. Okay, so Semper, yeah. how did you join Schema? Um, so, originally I was taking a break from music. This was before I, just before I changed my name. So I was on like a two-week break, and I deleted all my social media, and I was just like chilling out playing xbox trying to fucking like mentally recover from music i guess because it's it takes its toll and then one day i like i just went onto my instagram on my browser and i checked my dms and um jay green had sent me a message and it was he said what's up good brother and i like freaked out for a second i was like what the fuck all right what's gonna happen here and i like clicked on clicked on his profile see if it was real and everything and pretty much um we just he he, uh, he said he fucked with my music and then he asked if I was free for a call and then we called up for an hour or so and talked about everything, chopped it up and yeah, and then he posted a roster. I didn't know if I was like in the scheme or I just, I just knew we were going to work on a tape together and um, then he, he, he posted like the scheme of posse roster and I was on there so that was that and then we made initiation of Vol 1 that and was we're coming crazy. out with volume 2 soon that was great, the initiation joint yeah. Solid tape. Yeah. So, what's Teddy's journey into schema? Bro, just click being clicked up with uh, Sempra <laughs> for sure. Um, Cause during that, I mean, even before that, but during that two week period of Sempra taking a break, we were posted up, obviously, chilling like we usually chill. And I remember he was like, bro, you'll never believe <laughs> what, uh, who messaged me type thing. And, uh, I think Semper brought my, brought my name up, definitely put Jay Green onto my music and Jay Green was like, oh, I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Yeah. And then I remember I was on vacation. I was, uh, uh, with my girl, I was in Oregon on the Oregon coast and Jay Green messaged me when I was on the beach and I was like, I was bugging out, obviously. <laughs> I was walking up and down the beach like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> do you yeah. get free merch when you're initiated in? <laughs> I'm joking. No. <laughs> I'm joking. I wish. A Semper's merch is out, okay? Is that still up? Because last time I checked yeah, it, it was pretty fire. The merch is fucking crazy. Yeah, I, I was going to make, um, I was going to make some, some, like, just like a, a line of merch, um, for the Vendetta tape. But I just forgot to do it, so I can still do it. I'll probably I'll probably do it this week. So it's just like a separate store with just um, Vendetta inspired stuff. Because I, I I was gonna actually just like make my merch line sort of under the Vendetta name because of that the the like little logo that I created for it. Yeah. Like, it would look on t-shirts and all that sort of stuff. So I might come out with that sooner or later. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to cop some of that merch, wear it in my you know videos and all that. So, yeah. I'll put the link below to that. By the way, anybody watching or listening, link below to Semper's merch. Teddy, do you plan on making merch as well? Bro, I got merch on the way right now. We were. <laughs> what what do I got coming, Semper? The 2021 official Teddy Slugs beach fucking towel. Yeah, I got some beach towels. Beach coming. towels. Bro, yeah, I got some beach got towels coming. Yeah. I assume you like the beach. If you're always, yeah. Is that, is that your favorite place to vacation I at? I mean, it's about anything. 
anything anything but icicles is good for me okay <laughs> it's it's icy here I try to get out go to travel travel down to oregon travel down to california so if you were in texas right now would you go to cancun uh probably i'd go to siren's house <laughs> chill in the heated house and make some music yeah. No, I don't know. I, don't I was know. just saying that because, like, some, like, mayor there, like, fled to Cancun and shit. I don't know. I thought you might have heard about that or some shit. Oh, no, no. I don't he, know nothing about that, bro. But, I'm such a... I, I, you don't I know about the news? Like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't pay attention. No, but everybody's like, oh, why did this, like, mayor guy go to Cancun when everybody's freezing and starving? What is he going to do? Change the weather? Like, like what the fuck yeah. is he going to do? Like, I don't know. People expect too much of politicians. They're all just, like... Idiots who don't know what they're like, they can't do much. Like, I don't know. Anyways, fuck politics. But, um, Semper, are you a fan of cassettes or CDs or anything like that? Do you have any or you just like digital? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't have any. I don't, I don't have a cassette player either. But I'm gonna get Teddy to send me a fucking a cassette copy of Vendetta. Yeah, I pressed, I pressed the Vendetta. Hell yeah. We're, we gotta see yeah. that. I don't have it. I don't have it mocked up yeah really i just pressed the actual tape itself yeah so like you didn't like make, make the cover or anything like that yeah I haven't, I haven't printed the j card yet or the cassette kiss cut label on it or anything yet so do you have the like a special you know printer it's right here this is this is vendetta no but i'm saying though like in order to print the um the card or whatever you said you know is that like a special printer do you have to go somewhere or is it just in your house it's just in my house, yeah. I do everything in house with the cassettes. Okay, dope. Yeah. I think it's like a laser jet. I think a we laser jet. to a laser jet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. I don't know. I'm trying to make CDs for somebody that I know and shit. Um, I just, I just don't want to. So half of me wants to like hand them out, but half of me doesn't want to waste my money. So like, I don't know. We might pass out flyers or some shit. Like. Mm. I don't know. Somebody was passing out flyers for some music group. I mean, anyways. Um, Teddy, though, is Lil Jeff Gordon the most motivational person you know? Of course, bro. That fool, <laughs> that fool is ridiculous. He'll, every time we talk, it's a great time. You know, we talk about goals, uh, real life shit, bro. bro yeah, he's, I'm going to. Good things about that fool. He's going to start a podcast, he told me. No shit. He's. Bro, he's every time I talk to that, he's got something crazy in the works. Every time I talk to him, yeah, I bro. Believe it. Yeah, bro. That's like, yeah. Shout out to little Jeff Gordon. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know what else we could could we cover. Let me see. I feel like we covered everything. I mean. Oh yeah, Samfra, did you hear about the nine year old that listening listens to your music? Yeah, the the the, the ninety year old you see that was ninety. The -year -old. Yeah, were you surprised or were you like Yeah, well I'm like I'm I'm trying to you know, that's always good to appeal to the older generation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I feel like it would have been better if there was a video though. That would have been better. <laughs> yeah. That no, that, that would have been a good a good meme that one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um All right, Sempra. I'm going to ask both of you guys this, though. So, Sempra, you pick one producer to do a collaboration tape with. Just just the producer. Who would that be? That's that's a real hard one. Um, it depends what genre I'd be making the tape, isn't it? But there's a few legendary ones. Are we talking ones that are out of reach or like... Out of reach, yeah, sure. Um, oh. Freddie Dread probably. I'd get him to produce me some shit. I feel I feel like a tape produced by him would be would go crazy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now Teddy, who would the producer be that you choose? Can I can I give you like a top three? Because it's hell yeah, I, I don't hell think yeah. It would be able to pick. All right. Obviously, Mad Lib. It, okay, okay, I'm gonna do a combo. It'd be if if I could work with Madlib and Jay Dilla together, um, oof, oof. or 
uh, my second pick would be DJ Muggs from Cypress Hill. Mm. For, I, he's very inspirational to me. I like that. Uh, I really like that Fool's Productions. And then probably like DJ uh, Premier from Gangstar. Mm. I don't know if you're familiar with Gangstar, but uh, he's he's a legend. So those would be my three. All right, so we're going to end it off. Links in the description to Teddy Slugs and Sembry's music. And do you guys have anything you want to announce before we stop recording? What do you got, Teddy? You got, you got something to announce. Yeah, Holy. bro. Uh, I got a tape coming with Phony Wallace um, called Ransomware. And it's going to have, every song is going to have features from the homies. So you're going to see a feature from Sempra, a feature from Cold-Blooded, uh, other various artists. And then I got a tape coming with Jake OHM. Same thing. <sighs> features from a bunch of the schemas, a bunch of the mob. Yeah. That should be oh. out soon. So. Oh, yeah. I got a tape um, I'm working on with Isaac. It's, it'll be like a four-track, another four-track one. So it'll be all dusty, dirty beats. But it's quite an interesting one. I'm, I'm going. I'm going really into depth with the lyricism on this one. Dusty. We're gonna be talking about some very important fucking subjects. What are those subjects? You'll see. Ah yes. <laughs> ah, yeah. Got, Got him. him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. That was that was a great interview. I mean, I've been hyping this up, and I feel like it did live up to the hype. You know, obviously experiencing that. Semper and Teddy Slug stream their music links below this is another episode of has discusses subscribe to the channel and if you're listening on audio platform download the episode and check out the sponsors in the description and i'll see or you download guys download this episode right download, it. download it download it download it subscribe yes. fool goodbye